Hi, everyone. Thank you for that amazing introduction. So now you all know who I am. And uh, before we start talking about how to build your MVP, I just want to give you a quick introduction to Primer and payments. So the payment space is exploding with innovation. You have new local payment methods popping up everywhere, like Klarna, ClearPay, Apple Pay. The PSPs like Stripe, Adyen, Molly. Open banking like Ting, TrueLayer, Vault. Tax automation, accounting, um, ERP systems, loyalty and rewards, and so on and so forth. The list goes on. Now, merchants want to make use of all of this innovation. So they keep building new integrations to new services. And their payment stack is expanding. Now, they, do, they want to do more than this. They have sophisticated payment strategies. So maybe they want to route their payments to the right processor. They want to optimize authorization rates. They want to do even more. Maybe they want to optimize their checkout experience, because you know if you've paid online, the checkout is not always great. But payments are hard, and all of those services are different. So this means a lot of engineering resources, and it results in mountains of spaghetti code. This is the big problem that Primer is solving. Because now, with just one integration to Primer, merchants can connect to all the services that they want to use with only a few clicks on Primer's dashboard. No code required. Primer's universal checkout works seamlessly with all the payment methods, and it's fully customizable. Then we have workflows. And this is a really, really cool feature. So workflows will let merchants define sophisticated business logic across all of their connections and automate their payment flows. So I'll show you how this works. Let's say we want to define some logic for our high-risk payments. And for us, in this case, that means payments where the amount is more than 100 US dollars and is paid with a card that is not a Visa and MasterCard. You can work with different conditions and define those, but this is our route now for high-risk payments. So what we want to do first is we want to do a fraud check. So let's add in our fraud prevention tool, Riskified. And we'll advise Riskified. So if Riskified says reject, we will reject and decline the transaction. If Riskified says proceed, we'll proceed and send the transaction to our PSP, Stripe in this case. If Stripe says authorized, we will capture the funds and take the payment. This is a very, very simple workflow route, but you can imagine the complex things you can do with those simple building blocks. Workflows is a really, really amazing feature, and it was invented at Primer. So I'll tell you the story of how we build the MVP for workflows and beyond. This is me. Uh, we already did the introduction, uh, but I'm Monica. I'm heading up product and design at Primer. And I've been involved in defining and designing uh, Primer's products from the very beginning. But before I was at Primer, I worked on a couple of other products. So uh, my first one was Squid News. So this is a news app for millennials. They're doing pretty well now. You can check them out. Uh, later, I led the consumer product team at Tank, which is a Swedish open banking startup. Uh, this was before open banking, so we were building a personal finance manager uh, with a mortgage refinancing feature. Later, I co-founded Gimme, which is a bank with a prepay card for children uh, to teach children financial literacy from an early age. So I joined Primer in June 2020, and here we are uh, on Zoom, because this was in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, and I'm based in Stockholm, and most of the Primer team was in the UK. So during the first couple of months when we were building our MVP, we actually never met. So this entire story, um, which I will tell, is happening online. And um, one of the main reasons why 
I was so excited to join uh, Primer was because of this massive vision that the founders had. They had spent their entire careers in payments and worked with a lot of merchants and they really understood the problems that they were facing. They had massive vision and a great idea, a very novel way to solving this problem. Also, they wanted to invest in product and design from the early stage, which is kind of unheard of for a early stage B2B fintech. So I was very, very excited. Here we are, and it's time to start building. So how do you build your MVP? This is a kind of well-known process where uh, you go step by step. You start with understanding the market, your users, and the problem. You go on to explore solutions. Then you validate your solution before implementing. And then you keep on iterating uh, on that solution. Now, I don't have a new framework or a posing view or any magic tricks. So I thought I would just show you what we did when we built workflows at Primer. And I hope you find some inspiration from it. So let's get started with understanding the problem. And at Primer, we were very lucky to have two founders who had this extensive market knowledge. Uh, so when we started out, we already had an Airtable full of market data, different verticals, quotes, uh, entire mappings of payment stacks. But we still wanted to get even closer to our future users. So we scheduled a lot of interviews. And I'll show you some examples of what we learned. One merchant in the fashion industry told us that they were retrying all transactions, all declined transactions, regardless of the decline reason. And this is really expensive. But you also don't want to retry transactions if the decline reason is card was stolen. Right? Another merchant in the food delivery uh, vertical said that th it was very hard for them to A-B test. Uh, so they didn't really know which PSP or card processor that was the best. And A-B testing is this topic that many, many merchants were mentioning that they were struggling with. Now, today we have all of our merchants on Slack, so it's very easy for them to reach out to us whenever they have any questions or need help. Uh, but it also means that the product and design team uh, can reach out and show a demo, ask questions, uh, maybe test a prototype, uh, and collaborate very, very closely uh, with our customers. I'm not in all channels, but all channels are open, and I can join them whenever I want. Now, there's something to be said about alternating small and big thinking. So when we get on calls and we conduct interviews, we want to practice this type of small thinking and really get into the details to understand uh, our customers. But we don't want to lose track of the bigger picture. So here you need to connect the dots between all the small problems that your users are talking about. And it's this big thinking that allowed Primer to have this massive vision and go beyond being one product that solves one particular problem for one type of merchant in one vertical. Uh, Primer is a technical infrastructure that solves this massive global problem. So very early on, we had this map of our product ecosystem. You can see workflows here, but you can also see the checkout and other product areas that are equally important. Together, these product areas solve this massive problem. So to summarize understanding the problem, there are limitations to user research, right? It will tell you what is wrong, but not necessarily how to solve it. And it rarely leads to, to great products just automatically. Um, and there's a huge difference between getting really close to your users and, and really getting to know them and empathizing with their problem compared to conducting artificial focus groups. Let's move on to exploring solutions. And uh, this is really my favorite part. Uh, I love getting creative and getting my hands dirty and just 
start exploring. So this is how we started. We had a look at a couple of tools that were claiming to do this type of workflow automation, not just in payments. And we actually saw, during one of our interviews, um, a merchant was sh sharing their screen and showing us uh, how they were using one of those tools. And they were struggling to find a rule that they had set up. And they even found a mistake that they had previously configured in one of their rules. So we kind of realized that these tools weren't visual enough. So what we wanted to do with workflows is we wanted people to just get it from just looking at it. So no long lists of text and no drop downs. So here's uh, the first version of a visual workflow from one of the engineers uh, on our team. We try to be very visual, not just in, in how we design our product, but also in how we communicate ideas within the team. Uh, this is not so visual. Um, but this is uh, th this was actually the first wireframes uh, for workflows, and designers are used to um, designing workflows for the user journey, so a user flow. And in this case, this is actually a payment flow. So here we wanted to understand uh, the flow of a payment through different services. You can see the authorization request, the fraud check. Um, the processor or PSP, and even some data being sent to a BI tool. Now, let's talk about inspiration. So I always loved building things, and I used to play with Lego and Little Bits. And Little Bits are these electronics toys. They're like small components, and they snap together with magnets. And they're very, very simple, but you can build really cool things with them, like a synthesizer. And you all know the cool things you can build with Lego. So we kind of wanted workflows to be like toys, right? Something very simple that anyone could understand, and you could build really cool things, really sophisticated things with them. So workflows were designed for a five-year-old. Now, inspired by toys, we started exploring UI. And those are some, some of our first attempts to a user interface. We wanted it to be colorful and playful and kind of resemble Lego and Little Bits. They're not pretty, but it's, uh, well, the first exploration. So to summarize, uh, when you explore a solution, try to just stay open-minded, creative, have fun, uh, and maybe look for inspiration in unexpected places. Don't just look at competitor competitors. Now. Let's move on to validation. And this is where you want, want to get some feedback and validate your product. So here's how we did it. When we felt confident enough with what we had, we wanted to show it to some potential customers. Up until now, we had only been talking about workflows. And now you know how workflows work. And it's not that easy to explain without having the visual. So we built a really, really complicated prototype in our design tool, Figma, and uh, we scheduled some calls. And here we are, again over Zoom, because it's still in the middle of a pandemic, and we're showing this prototype to a bunch of merchants. And this is so hard, because it's really hard to build a drag-and-drop interface that feels like toys uh, in Figma. And also, we had to give a lot of context on Primer, because no one knew Primer at the time, uh, before we could even start explaining workflows. And by the way, each and one of those sessions is more than just user testing, because it's also kind of like marketing for Primer. So we had to do a really good job at making them excited about Primer. I find this very, very hard. But we learned so much. So one merchant in the gaming industry said that they were sort of trying to build something similar in-house, but that was, it was really hard. So this really validated our value proposition. Another merchant in the micromobility space had a really good idea. So they said, we've built our own fraud engine. Can we plug it in here instead of that fraud prevention tool that you're showing us? And yes, you can do that. That's a really good idea. 
later we invited uh, a bunch of customers to Figma, to our design tool, to work with us. And here they could actually try and move the components around. We can switch out the logos to the services that they were actually using. So they could now build in our design tool the workflows that they actually wanted to build. And again, we could validate that this tool could do what they wanted to do. We've done this countless times now. And uh, in Figma, we have an entire page with lots of design files that we share with our merchants. And this is a great way to collaborate really, really closely. Feedback is not just external. We do a lot of internal feedback. Uh, Paul, one of the co-founders, was not always happy or impressed with my designs, but we tried to practice this very, very open and honest feedback culture. Now, internally, we also conduct a lot of usability tests. Um, so we make use of the team that might not have been that exposed to the product just yet uh, and see if it works well from a usability perspective. Um, I wanted to show you a video of the, uh, the very first implementation of workflows, but apparently videos don't work. Uh, so this is just a screenshot. But as you can see, this is the first front-end implementation. It doesn't work because it's not hooked up to anything. It's just front-end. And it looks nothing like the designs. But this was a way for us to validate that we can build that nice, fluid, snappy front-end uh, and interaction pattern that we wanted. Another way we wanted to validate our designs was to make sure they scaled. So you can see how we can create a really, really big workflow vertically and horizontally. And we also wanted to make sure that we can add in more sophisticated features in the future. We were imagining a type of toolbox where you could add in maybe A-B testing, which was one of those features that everyone was requesting. So to summarize, there are so many ways to, to validate different aspects of your product before you implement it. But you can never be 100% certain. So you also need to have some intuition and conviction about what you're building. So let's move on to implementation. And you might have noticed that I have not been talking about MVP so far at all. Because during the entire process of understanding the problem and getting to know users, exploring solutions, and validation, we want to keep that big thinking. So now, when we start implementing, this is where we want to define the MVP scope. And we want to be really, really smart when we do that. So when we started implementing workflows, on the first iteration that we made available to merchants on our dashboard, it was view only. So you could not interact with it. So we would get on a call with our merchant, and we would learn what they wanted to do. We would write it down, and then we would create a workflow manually and just display it on the dashboard. And again, we would get some feedback, some questions, and we could iterate and improve it. The next iteration had editing capabilities, and this was huge. So finally, we could let users interact with the interface, and it was really cool to see. However, this version did not have validation. So they could build something that made no sense at all. So we had to manually validate every workflow that was saved on the dashboard. And we expected everything to go wrong, and we planned for the worst. But it just worked, and it was so cool to see the first workflows being published. Today, again, I wanted to show you a video, but I don't have it. So if you want a real demo of workflows, please reach out to me. But today, workflows have a publish button, which means you can obviously publish them from the dashboard. Um, and they, it has like a lot of really cool, sophisticated features, like smart suggestions and more. Now, we get a lot of ideas still from our users. So we keep communicating over Slack. Uh, and there's a lot of ideas both from our team and from our users. And I guess the, the thing that is important when you have ideas from users is you really want to get to the bottom of 
what the problem really is, rather than just building uh, everything that is being requested. Now, we've implemented, we've kept on iterating, and you might have also noticed that we started implementing in the validation phase. And we kept validating during the implementation phase. And the exploration and the getting to know the user just never stops. So the process is not really linear like this. It looks more like this. You kind of need all the parts, but it's just not linear. Our success with workflows doesn't come from following a by-the-book process like this. It comes from having intuition and conviction about a big vision. It comes from extensive market understanding and customer focus. It comes from having an open-minded and creative approach and moving at high speeds. And I could tell you another story of how we built another of our features or products, uh, like the checkout. And the story will be quite different. But we never compromise on those values. And today, the Primer team is very busy um, iterating and improving our existing products, but also in various stages of exploring new product areas. So if you think any of this sounds interesting, please reach out. And thank you for listening. Thank you.